Okay, so now let's see how this is done. So I'm back to my command line. And if you look, we have the Dockerizing part one video. So I'll just copy that recursively. So we have in each one of our directories, we have a Docker file for three services, and it's used to build the containers for each one of the services. And that's great, and we've done that already. So what we want to do now is let me bring up my VS code. Let's create a Docker compose file because that's what I said we're going to use to be able to manage these services so we don't have to launch each one of them individually. So let's do this Docker PS minus A. I shouldn't have anything running. But before I do write my Docker compose file, um, just make sure that you have the Docker compose command. So you type Docker compose and there it is. Okay. So let's go back to our Docker Compose file. Now, a Docker Compose file is just like a Docker file. It's really simple. And so it's just Docker that compose that YAML. This YAML file is a, a YAML file is a certain format. It's, I can't remember what it stands for, but it came out after JSON. It's supposed to be simpler than JSON. And we're going to see YAML files a lot because not only is Docker does Docker use it? Um, we're not going to do it a lot with Docker Compose, but in Kubernetes, that's how we configure um, the different Kubernetes um, resources. So anyway, without going into the details of Docker Compose, because we're not trying to spend too much time learning Docker Compose right now, we're just using this as a stepping stone to get to Kubernetes. So one of the first things that you have to say is services. Now, what this allows you to do is to say, I have a set of containers that I need to be able to run together. That's why, the Docker com that's why Docker Compose is us um, useful. One thing with YAML files is that they use spaces uh, or indentation or how to organize data, like the hierarchy between data, like what is within something, like what is a subset of something else. So you have this service as a top level thing, and then if I indent two spaces, it has to be like two spaces. Um, can be one. It's some, it complains. It's like finicky, like Python. And so what I want to do is I say I have the Redis service. And again, I would say colon to say that oh, this is something that I have. And then I want under the Redis service, I want to be able to specify which image I'm going to use. So here I can say I want to use the Redis image. And that's it. Now, since we have a Docker Compose file, here it is, Docker Compose. I can say Docker dash compose. Remember, that's the command. I can say up, and this would start up that Redis um, container for me. I'm going to say minus D to put it, um, run it in the background as a daemon. And as you can see, it's what it says here. If you can see my screen properly, it says network, and it created a network based on the directory that's in, that it's in, which is this directory. I call it underscore default. And so it says, I created a network. And then look what it did. It started this container with Docker Compose. It created a separate network and it's running this Redis con container and that service on that and connected to that network. As you can see already, there's a nice benefit of using Compose, Docker Compose to run multiple services because it automatically creates this network and manages for you. You don't have to specify any of that information. Now, let's continue. Oh, before we continue, we can go back here to Docker PS, and we should see our Redis service is running. And there it is. It's running, and it gave it a name, okay, which we see here. Now, the thing is, I can use the Docker Compose command and do the same PS and essentially see um, just the services that were created by this Docker Compose file. So while Docker PS will show me all container regardless of which um, how they were created, Docker Compose PS, once I'm in that directory with a Docker Compose file, will show me the containers were created with that Docker Compose file. So let's continue. I have a goal of trying to make this video no longer than about 10 minutes. So let's keep moving. And so let's say server is the other um, service I want to start up. So what is the image for that? tag that we give to our service, our um, server, where we created it. And if I go back here now, and I do this, and so we should see what's happening. And so if I do Docker 
compose i do opt minus d notice what happened it says container docker server started and then redis is running so it checked and saw that the redis container was running and so it didn't need to start it and so that's why the Redis container is up three minutes and now it started the server container. So it's smart enough to say, oh, I already have Redis running, so nothing to do there. So let's continue. We want to finish this in like 10 minutes. If I, the next service we want to have is the counter service. And since I don't want to do this and waste any time, let's just go right ahead and make our polar service too. And so now if I go back here, and clean up and I do docker compose up we should see that now is going to start our counter and polar and that's fine so who do we know if this is all running I said it out they're all running and they're connected to the same network notice we didn't have to expose any port we can see here that the server is running on port 8080 and redis is running on port 63 but those are not exposed right so I couldn't use curl to get to that anyway because it's not accessible but if I do docker compose and i do logs minus f for follow and i follow the logs you can see oh well what is happening well it looks like my counter is trying to post to ip address of my computer so that's not going to work because the, those ports are not open on my computer so so we have to go fix our containers. So one of the things we can do is go back to our Docker file and remove this environmental variable from the Docker file itself, and then just set it inside of our um, Docker compose. The advantage of that is that now, when we start up our container, we can have Docker compose then um, provide the environmental variable. I'll just comment this out in our um, compose files. I'll comment out API URL. And for the server, I'm going to comment out Redis. I'll comment out Redis URL. And I'll leave the listen address to 8080. So that's fine. It's listening its own local address. No problem. Now we need to rebuild these images. Well, even there, Docker Compose can help us. So let's put a build that. And then the thing we want to build is our server. And let's do our container, counter to, and our polar. And what this is, is now we have this build instruction essentially that says that, you know what, when it comes to the polar service, we can build it relative to where the Docker Compose file is. In this directory, there's a Docker file. And what that allows us to do then is to do like this, instead of going and build each single one. So why don't I do Docker Compose and plus, we can build multiple, we can build multiple images at the same time. So I can say Docker Compose build, and now, is going to try and build each one of those. Now it's going to fail, and the reason it's going to fail is because in those directory we don't have the actual binary. So that's the only thing we need now is the binary. Because if we clean up and we look at all of our files, we will see um, within each directory we do not have the executable. So let's go into our server and we're going to do go os and build that for Linux. Remember, I don't want to do the default build unless I'm on Linux. I want to go back to my counter, for example, and I'll do go OS. And I'll build it for Linux too. And then I go to my polar and I'm going to do go OS and build it. And now if I go back up and now I do clean up and I do FD, now we'll see that all we have our executables or three executables, they are red. So now if I do Docker Compose again and I do build, this time, close this up a little bit. Maybe we can even extend this down a bit. Now, notice how it builds successfully. So it says naming those images, writing them. And that was pretty easy. We did not have to go into each directory because we already have the Docker Compose file. But now remember, our Docker Compose file don't contain the URL or anything. So that's fine. So I'm going to close this up because there's a lot going on here. 